The first thing that comes to mind when you hear the word volcano is a gushing fountain of molten rock coming out of the ground and building a cone. Now here on planet Earth, volcanoes are formed by molten rock that rises to the surface and erupts, and then the molten rock freezes and builds a mountain called a volcano. Volcanoes that erupt hot molten rock are common features of rocky planets. Now I'm going to introduce you to a different type of volcano called an ice volcano or cryovolcano. Instead of eruptions of hot molten rock, ice volcanoes erupt cold liquids such as water, ammonia, carbon dioxide, and nitrogen, and much more. Cryovolcanism occurs on the icy moons of the outer solar system. Icy moons and other icy bodies such as Triton, Titan, Enceladus, and also Pluto have exhibited cryovolcanism. Here is a photo of Saturn's moon Enceladus. It is a small icy moon about 500 kilometers in diameter. Those white plumes you see on the surface right there going into space are from cryovolcanoes. The eruptive material that you see here is actually from water. The water erupts to the surface and it freezes and a lot of it gets ejected into space. Here is Enceladus from a little bit farther away. On the bottom left you can see the plumes from the cryovolcanoes as well as the material being injected into space. Now here's a cryovolcano on the surface of Pluto. It is about 150 kilometers wide and about 5 kilometers tall. Now some may ask, are ice volcanoes considered real volcanoes? The answer is yes. Molten rock is not the only requirement for a volcano. The mechanics of ice volcanoes forming on the outer icy moons of the solar system are the same as they are here on Earth, except that the volatiles are cold, liquid, compressed gases. For example, on Enceladus, the volatile that's coming out of the ice volcano is water. And what happens is there's a magma chamber or a cryo magma chamber underneath the volcano that contains water instead of molten rock. On Enceladus, the water or cryo magma underneath the surface of Enceladus is much hotter than the surface of Enceladus. Therefore, the water freezes as it comes out of the ground. In order to fit the definition of a volcano, there has to be a couple factors. One, the cryo magma, or in this case, water, has to be heated from the interior of the icy moon in question. Now the heat being generated inside the icy moon can be done by either radioactive decay or tidal stresses caused by orbiting Saturn. Number two, the pressure has to be greater underneath than it is at the surface of the icy moon or in this case Enceladus. High pressures deep within Enceladus push the volatiles of cryomagma, in this case water, to the surface of Enceladus. Third, the temperature below the surface must be hotter than the temperature of the surface. And it's especially true of the volatiles. The volatiles coming out of the eruptive vent on a cryovolcano is going to be hotter than the surface of the icy moon in question. The surface temperature of Enceladus is minus 198 degrees Celsius. The temperature of the eruption material coming out of the ice volcanoes is 200 to 400 degrees Celsius warmer than the surface of Enceladus. The ice or cryovolcanoes of Enceladus are considered to be true volcanoes. The only difference is they erupt water and ammonia instead of molten rock. There are also ice volcanoes here on Earth, but these are not true volcanoes because they are formed under completely different circumstances and it requires the wind. These structures are normally formed on the shores of large bodies of mainly fresh water, particularly in the Great Lakes region of the United States. The conditions needed to form these lakeshore ice volcanoes are the wind and also below freezing temperatures. As the waves crash onto the shore due to the wind, the water will go up into the air, it will freeze in the air, and it will fall down and form a cone called an ice volcano. But it's not really a volcano, as volcanoes are formed under completely different conditions. The ice volcanoes you see here in this picture were formed by the wind, with the waves crashing to the shore, and the water freezing in the air, forming these conical formations. 